Now, here he's saying that he was sorry that he made man on the earth and it grieved his heart. So he says, I'm going to destroy uh, man. And this is what's going on. All right. But Noah found grace. Why? Because he was doing sacrifices, not because he was a good guy. All right. So now let's go back. Now that we've seen it, we understand Genesis chapter one. I mean, Genesis chapter six, one and two. So now let's prove through other scriptures that the sons of God was, in fact, angels. All right. Here we go. Job chapter one. What are we looking for? We're proving that the sons of God was in fact angels and not set line. There was no look, set line. It's one single line leading to the Messiah. Noah was in that line. So all those set children were not saved. Just Noah and the others that came through that line. All right. So here we go. Sons of God. It's no godly line of humans. How do I know that? Because everybody's born a sinner. So this craziness about Seth and his children, offspring, being godly is just ridiculous. There's no such thing as somebody being godly at birth. God saves. And then they become godly. Okay. Now, this is talking about Job and what was happening, how he was living. Now, here it is. Now, <laughs> again, this is looking from in heaven. Now, there was a day. This is in heaven, folks. This is not happening on the earth. When the sons of God, how do I know this is happening in heaven? Because look at what these sons of God did. They all came to do what? Present themselves. So every angel have to pass before the Lord on certain days. What days? I have no idea. All it tells us is that this happens occasionally where every demon that's not locked up have to come and pass before the Lord. They present themselves before the Lord. Guess who else have to come? You don't have a choice, folks. You think you want to do this? Of course not. God says you have to do it. He's a created being. He has to obey. Satan also came among them. Among them who? The sons of God. Why? Because he's one too. Hmm, Satan is the son of God. No, he's a created being, which makes him a son of God because everything that was directly created by God Every angel and every human, it's only two, Adam and Eve, but every angel is a direct creation of God. They don't have any procreation. It wasn't necessary because that's not God's plan to use them. He's the son of God. All the angels, holy and unholy. And the Lord said to him, see, he came where? Before the Lord. This is happening in heaven, folks. God's pulling back the curtain. All right, so we know that this is happening in heaven. How? Because look at what Satan says. He says to the Lord, from going to and fro where? On the earth. And walking back and forth. In. If he was already on the earth talking to God, then why would he say that? Because he wasn't. This conversation is taking place in the heavens. Not the heaven of heavens, which is outside of both the spirit realm. For those who don't know what I'm talking about. All right, this is spirit, this is physical, this is earth, heavens with an S. This is what the Bible calls the world. Where is God? God is out here, outside of the world, in heaven, all right? So this conversation that's going on is happening right here. Not here, because no sin can come where God is. He would automatically destroy. And when he come into, finally, into the world, what happens to this world? 
it gets destroyed because God sees it. And he then creates a new world. All right. So the conversation has happened here. Satan says, I was going down here and walking in the earth. So you can clearly see that this is happening on earth. Now, let's go to our second reference. The same thing happened, but it happens in the next chapter. Here it is. This is another day. How do I know that? Because listen to look at what the testimony of the book says again. So this is happening again. There's another day. There was a day when the sons of God, that is these people again, came to do what? Same thing. Present themselves before the Lord. They don't have a choice. Who's with them? Satan came again. Satan also came among them. Who? These are angels. To present himself before the Lord. He don't get a choice, folks. God is in absolute total control. He's a potentate. He's a dictator. See, I don't like that. So what? Change it. And the Lord said to Satan, where you come? He gives him the same answer. So you can see clearly two references. You already have two witnesses. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to give you more witnesses that the sons of God in Genesis is the same sons of God that Job was talking about. Angels, not set, not men, angels. Okay. Now, let's move. We're talking the same thing. Trying to figure out who these sons of God are in, uh, <clears throat> in Genesis. So Job is in chapter 36. Watch what happened. So, oh no, it's not 36. Sorry, it's 38. So Joe is having this conversation with all these, 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 these uh, men, his friends. And he gets a little round bunches and ahead of himself. And he starts making these things about God. Now, he didn't sin and accuse God of anything, but he was saying some foolish stuff. So God had to set him straight. So God, God shows up. Look what he tells him. Joe, uh, who is this? And this is, he can say this about all of us. Who is this who darkens counsel? What counsel? God's counsel. He takes God's counsel by words without knowledge. That's all of us. Even believers today, we don't know the full counsel of God. So every time you try to explain it, in greater detail than what's written, you're going to dock it. So can believers do that? Of course. When you start looking at sons of God, and I take it further than what the Bible says, I'm darkening the God's counsel because I have no knowledge of what happened outside of what's written. That's why you should never do that. If you're going to state something like that, you should say, it's my opinion. Then it doesn't matter. Then you're not saying God did or said something that he didn't do or say. Okay. He says, now, okay, prepare yourself like a man. I'm going to ask you some questions. And he asks us the same questions. Here it is. And you need to answer this. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what its foundations are fastened? Is it not hanging out there or not? Yet it can't move. Who laid its cornerstone? When, here we go. When the morning stars, these are angels. They witness what God just described in the verses above. They were there, folks. God created the heavens. Go to Genesis 1.1. God created two things. The Bible says he created the heavens. 
not just the heavens, but every, the host of heaven. Now, this isn't the moon, the sun, the stars, right? This is the creature, host of heavens. This is all the angelic beings. So he created the heavens, then he did something else. He created the earth. I showed you what the earth was. The earth includes everything discoverable to man, which is all the universe, all the universes, right? Everything that, that we know of and can see, sun, moon, stars, all that stuff. The angels, the morning stars, angels, they sing. It's the only reference to angels singing in the Bible together. And all the sons, there they go. Same people shouted for joy. Why did they shout for joy? Because God created the earth. The earth is not just the planet. It's everything in the physical realm. Heavens, earth, spirit, physical. The angels in heaven up here watch God create this. That's how they know they are not God because he created them in a microsecond. They all showed up and was commanded to worship him. And they probably was wondering why in the world, that's my opinion, why should I worship you? Then they watched him create something out of nothing. They started singing for joy. They started worshiping him. Hebrews 1 says, when God created the heavens, he sent the sun into the heavens. What was the first thing that happened? What was the first thing that happened when Jesus Christ created the heavens and the angels and they looked up at him? Like the Bible says in Hebrews 1, they worshiped him. Worship who? Jesus, the man. He was there, folks. Okay, so we see clearly that the sons of God is not men. Because this was taking place before there was an earth. Sons of God were angels. These are the same angels that was there in Genesis chapter 6. These are the same angels that cohabited with women. Now, now that you know that the sons of God is angels, what about this craziness, Kevin, of this cohabitation with women? Dude, are you serious? Uh, yeah. Because that's what the book said. Let's make this reference right quick. Okay. Now, we've resolved the sons of God. Now, let's deal with the second half of what the angels actually did, okay? Now, we're dealing with the second part of that, this cohabitation with women. We identified it. For those of you who are just joining us, what are we talking about? We're talking about, I'm using the Bible as the best commentary on the Bible, and I'm using this sons of God thing. Okay, so what are we talking about? We're talking about this right here, where uh, the sons of God, this reference in Genesis chapter 6, the sons of God who saw the daughters of, of men, okay? Daughters of men, sons of God, daughters of men. We know that the daughters are physical, natural women like we see. The sons of God, though, we said that they were angels. So how do we know that? We just proved it to you. There's three clear references that the sons of God identified in Genesis 6 are angelic beings and not humans. Okay, so that's the part we dealt with. Now we're about to deal with this part right here, right? Where we see that they cohabited right here. This part about the daughters, the son, when, when the sons of Get it right, Kevin. When, time word, 
the sons of God did something. What did they do? They came into, folks, that's a sexual relationship, okay? The daughters of men. Every time you see that in the book, it's always a reference to sex. What happened when they did that? They bore children to them. Well, did they bear children to? The sons of God. That's what the book is saying. Those men became world famous. Why? Because sinners love sin. All right. So that's what made God flood the world. 